Jerry Moss is a human force field protecting one of the few remaining populations of the red squirrel in the UK. It's his job to keep the greys at bay and the reds refuge secure and he has a full selection of day state air rifles to do it with. If there's even a sniff of the bully boy non-native he or one of the other red squirrel rangers in this part of Cumbria are on it. It's a shock and awe strategy. You see a grey squirrel and you know you've got to get that out of the equation as soon as possible. You do everything in your power or in your knowledge to get that, that grey squirrel at that time because it might be days or weeks until you get a chance at it again or you might never get a chance at it again. This morning there's been a sighting of a grey on a fellow ranger's patch. Jerry and Christian sometimes work in pairs to cover more ground. Four eyes are better than two when dealing with the greys. The plan is we're going to go up this mountain up here on a hunt for grey squirrels. Me and Christian will scan in the area with thermal imaging camera, the FLIR. We'll see what's about. They take their work seriously, blending in beautifully thanks to Jack Pike Clothing. The British clothing company also supports their efforts. I need stuff that's reliable, blends in well with the English countryside and Jack Pike does that for me. Christian is carrying a 40 foot pound airwolf topped with an MTC scope and a tack light green eyed monster. Jerry has a 30 foot pound Mark IV Daystate, also topped with the MTC scope. Over time, Jerry and his fellow rangers have honed their skills and increased their success rate. The FLIR thermal imager has been a revelation. The good thing, you know, using thermal imaging, you've got someone scanning with a thermal imaging, but you've also got someone scanning different areas. You could have another thermal imager at all, but you could be scanning with your eyes. So stuff that maybe Christian might miss, I might see, and vice versa. This is tough terrain. The guys scan and move. Christian spots something. He checks with the scope. One red blob can look like another. This time, robin. it's a robin. <laughs> but if you're looking through you know, a lot of rubbish and you're looking at distance, you know, you're picking out just little heat sources. You've still got to check it out because it just could be part of a grey squirrel, you know. This is not management, it's eradication. The bigger bodied greys not only outcompete the reds, but also carry a disease similar to Mixie, a virus called Parapox. It doesn't affect them, but it kills reds. Without the effort from a lot of people over the last, especially 10 years, I suppose, I don't think we'd, we'd have red squirrels here or anywhere in Cumbria, to be honest. Our best chance is by the many feeders. They serve two purposes, supplementing the reds' diet while attracting the greys for the chance of a shot. Unfortunately, the feeders don't look touched and our chance may have been lost today. But then Jerry spots a grey squirrel further down the slope. See? We lose it, then pick it up, then lose it, then it comes straight towards us. Jerry is ready, it stops for just long enough. The 25 yard shot is well executed and another opportunist is removed from the equation. Happy Joe? Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> another one less to terrorise our reds. Just checking the feeders here, it appeared from the right hand side. Way off, but luckily it came towards the feeders. But the feeders are not being touched since Tuesdays. Luckily it came just right and sat and waited. And just hit it just through the side of the neck there. I think the pellet's gone into the head. Certainly acted that way when I shot it. So yeah, pleased with that. Every squirrel counts, so it's been a successful morning. Now Jerry has traps to check and feeders to fill. Joining us is Day State's Tony Beelis. Daystate supports Jerry and the other rangers. We saw this as a good justification, a really good example of where air guns can be used responsibly. So we started to support them with um, supplying rifles, supplying equipment, which is obviously a benefit for us. They've helped us with development on rifles. And also um, we've done some special editions which have allowed us to put a little bit of money their way but also make them raise their profile which is obviously important for both Day State and for uh, the Red Squirrel Rangers. If their profile is raised then it will attract more volunteers, 
more donations and uh, to try and do it that way. But I don't think we've got there yet. I think we've still got a bit to go. Uh, I'm, I'm amazed that it's not mainstream story. You'd expect to see this sort of thing. Cute, cuddly, fluffy red squirrels on the news, being preserved up in the Cumbria, fighting back the Grey Horde, but it doesn't seem to come out. We've had fantastic support and sponsorship from Day State. Um, I hope I do my bit for Day State as well. But I've got the kit, this allowed me to have the kit like from a 12 foot pound air rifle to FAC rated air rifles. Every rifle has its own scenario. The Rangers have been the inspiration for some of the sought after Day State's limited edition rifles. And Tony has another with him today. So if you want something a bit different, this is the way to go. You won't see too many of these around, only 150 made worldwide, with probably half to three quarters of that going abroad. So for the UK, it's probably 40 in the shops, and that'll be it. Jerry is not the inspiration for this model, but he can still shoot with it. If you want to find out more about the work Jerry and Christian do, go to penrithredsquirrels.org.uk. Please get involved if you can. And for more information about the Day States, go to daystate.com. <laughs> <laughs>